Ladies and gentlemen, Blitz World Cup action coming at you here, free for all style. Four players, four top level pros who have played the best Big Betty throughout the entire year are banging out for the prize and the title of the king of the Big Betty map. Now, for those of you guys who haven't caught our other stuff, normally we do serious 1v1 stuff. You're saying, Ivor, this is silly, this is clownish, this makes no sense. Um, I agree. Big Betty is silly, it's meant to be fun. We're obviously doing a ton of 1v1 games uh, this month. We got 80 players in the 1v1 tournament, so stick around for that. But uh, today, we're doing we're, we're going to get a little weird here with the Big Betty map. So, in the very middle of the map, you guys are going to see that crate. That crate comes out, it gives the Big Betty. Now, of course, there is a booby trap. If you try to go in there and grab that crate with anything but a tank, it's not going to work. Kian knows the name of the game. He's going to be the first one in. Oh, but he doesn't get it. You can only be in the trap for a second. You got to take a straight line right at it. And look at that. And so Kian's the first one there. But uh, but Luke comes in. Oh, sorry, guys. We got Luke Z, the Jedi, in green in the bottom left. He's facing off against Marsh, Mystic Marsh in yellow, bottom right. Mystic Marsh already out in MCV in the bottom right. Uh, we got Kian, the Octo Kid in blue in the top right. And Zed. Uh, in red top left and uh, yeah this is going to be a wacky one we're running five games right now you get points based on where you place these four guys are running five games back to back to back to see who can come out on top now uh, Marsh does get in and take out takes out the big Betty but Marsh has no production left he's only down to a couple tanks gonna be very very tough but remember you get points for wherever you place so even if you don't take first uh, each game it's good to take some kind of place fourth place is the only position that doesn't get any points uh, so now a big Betty out for Kian on the right side, and uh, and yeah, Marsh is going to go right at Luke on the bottom left, try to try to get get some revenge. But look at Kian shooting down on Zed. Zed trying to play it a bit passive here, uh, not going to work out. Uh, yeah, there is no timer. We did take the timer off the free for all map, and of course we are having these guys start in the corners compared to the normal land rush style. Another big Betty out. And Kian looking way ahead in this position. He's got the most rhinos. He's got the big Betty. Um, yeah, and, and Marsh is down to producing on a barracks, looking to try to get some points and just try to stay alive. Like I said, guys, fourth place is the only place that doesn't get points. So first place gets three, second place gets two, third place gets one. At the end of the five games, whoever has the most takes it home. I know I explained all that information out of order, but Big Betty, man, once it starts rocking and rolling, it's, it's hard to keep track. Marsh going on the right side trying to pick on Kian. Um, you'd think he'd be going at, at Luke trying to get some revenge for Luke going right at him. There's a lot of politics involved in free-for-all. Obviously, you guys have heard uh, heard the players get upset about teaming and those kind of things. I mean, free-for-all, players get pinched, players get screwed over. Friendships are uh, friendships are broken in the, in the Blitz Pit free-for-all, that's for sure. But also, friendships are born. Mac 182, you like the mode? I'm glad you like it, buddy. I'm glad you like it. Keep training hard. Someday, maybe you'll be in the Big Betty World Cup. Marsh comes over and takes Luke's War Factory. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Okay, now another Big Betty coming down on Zed from Kian. And so Luke is in this game, but Marsh is pulling him out of the game. You know, Luke has pretty good production here. Now Luke out with a Desolator, so Marsh going to just pull these guys out. Again, the name of the game staying alive here uh, once you're down on chips. Trying to stay alive, trying to get in those top three so you can get some points out of the game. And, of course, come back in the next one and make something happen. Zed on the run. Zed able to save the MCV, but Kian is in his base. The Octo Kid putting a lot of pressure on right here. Marsh, Marsh, Marsh's infantry now going hunting. They're going to go pick on Kian. And this could buy uh, Luke a little bit of time here. Luke now with the big Betty. Zed still has the MCV top left. And Marsh in Kian's base. Kian might be looking for the knockout here. Kian might just want to go snuff this one out. Marsh down to one barracks. If someone can get in and take that barracks out, Marsh will pretty much be out of this game. But for the time being, Marsh has enough Tesla troopers to cause some damage here. Uh, friends for all. Yeah, that's a great that's a great point. It's not free for all. It stands for friends for all. Thank you for that. And uh, of course, guys, today after this, we do got a couple of great games coming up. We got some regular Yuri's Revenge and some uh, some Blitz coming up after this top level stuff. So stick around. Um, but <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go. We've never really ran a serious free for all game like this before. Um, but yeah, the first one, nonstop action here. Luke and Kian certainly in the running. But things can kind of tilt because it's difficult, right? Like. Kian can't really invest all of his resources to taking out Zed because Luke will try to backdoor him. So it allows Zed to get back in the game, and then whoever Zed decides to pick on can ultimately be what swings the game. Now, Zed out with a battle lab. Now, there is an interesting meta on this map, guys. You can get your battle lab out, get your Chronosphere, uh, Chrono Legionnaires out, and start sniping every single Big Betty. 
using the Chrono Legionnaire. So Zed, the only player playing allied right now, that is his advantage. He's pumping barrages. Let's see if he knows that strategy. Uh, Chrono Legionnaires could get Zed back in this game, but also Zed might just want to stay off the radar right now. Just kind of stay out of people's way. Marsh is still hanging and banging in bottom right. That's why you call him Mystic Marsh, man. Uh, with nothing but a barracks, he's in the game till the six minute mark. Big engagement here in the middle, Luke and Kian in an absolute knife fight going at each other. Another Big Betty out, and look at that unit control from Kian. Great map awareness to get in there and grab that Big Betty, but does lose it. Now the Big Betty, guys, it does massive damage, right? But it is relatively fragile and a low uh, rate of fire. So if you can smother it, that's exactly what you want to do, just smother it. And keep in mind, if you knock out a Big Betty, your tank automatically goes elite. So that can make a big difference. Luke now with the stretch up towards the middle. Oh, and a big chain reaction in the back of Zed's base. Kian finally decides he's had enough with Zed. But Zed's got plenty of mirages here to at least slow Kian down. So Kian needs to be careful. Kian's going to adjust his desolators from the right side over to the left to deal with Zed. Now, Kian needs to be careful because Luke in bottom left has a very nice position here stretching towards the center. Uh, this allows him to really get access to that Big Betty, which can make a huge difference here. Desolators from Kian pushing into a lot of pillboxes, not going to work in the top left. Marsh in the bottom right, chilling. You love to see it. He's mol bolstering up a group of Tesla troopers trying to find a way to get away from these desolators. All right, the Big Betty continuing its hunt on the left side. Desolators locking up that left zone. And Zed back in this game, ladies and gentlemen. He's on Battle Lab Tech. Ah, oh, Zed's broke, though. He did take that big oil hit, and his economy is going to really suffer for it. Another Big Betty out. And uh, any of you guys unfamiliar with the map, as soon as the Big Betty's killed, another Big Betty spawns. Also, the Big Betty times out, so you can't camp on it. Um, after about one minute, it will just die on its own. So you can never have two Big Bettys. Uh, shoot, a shout out to Nuclear Commando, man. He was a he was a modder helping me back in the day. Oh, back in the day, I guess it was a year ago. Seems like a long time ago. We came up with the Big Betty map, and he he put together. He made the unit. He made the trap. Uh, him and BB Glass, man, they really put put together some crazy stuff for Blitz. But Big Betty has to be the the single map that's given us the most value over the last year and a half that I've been streaming. Um, this one just never gets old. It never gets old. Now we've never really seen a game go like this before. Uh, but also, we've never had, you know, uh, money and uh, a crown on the line like this. Uh, these guys playing a little bit more passive than we're used to in the free-for-all pit. Uh, and with no timer, who knows how long we'll be here, boys. It is five games, though. You'd expect to see something more decisive happening early on. But both players, Kian and Luke, just doing such a great job controlling the Big Betty. And then, uh, and ultimately, they're putting pressure on each other. So their neighbors, they can't really go snuff out their neighbor. Someone needs to take out Marsh's Barracks. The other thing to keep in mind, guys, in free-for-alls, a lot of players don't get a good scout. Big engagement here. Oh, both players bringing over their desolators. And Luke is heavily out-tanking in this position. Luke going to roll through on Kia now. Uh, wait, where did Zed's army go? Zed, oh, Zed has a few mirages up top. I thought Zed had more tanks than that. Uh, Zed, if Zed got a Chrono Legionnaire out, Zed's forgetting about the Chrono Legionnaires. He could be sniping these Big Bettys and going to work. One Big Betty back to work and take out an MCV, take out an oil. Luke now cleaning up the Octo Kid. Marsh running into radiation. Marsh, not the radiation. Marsh has to run again. Marsh is totally at the whims of the Desolators right now, obviously. No way to counter him. Uh, no drones out for him. So Luke, now look at this, guys. So Luke takes out Kian, but ultimately, Luke doesn't have an army. Oh, never mind. Luke has an army still. I spoke too soon. Luke still has an army. Now, now Zed needs to be very careful because Luke's sights are now going to be set on him. Um, and again, guys, it, you don't want to quit out. It does come down to where you finish in the game. So everyone's going to want to try to stay alive as long as they can. Another Big Betty out. Oh, and look at that. Kian is ultimately able to drive back Luke's expansion. Luke's sending way too many tanks into the pit there. Uh, okay, does get another Big Betty. And, uh, and Zed, you know, that's kind of a little unspoken agreement there. You know, you saw Zed uh, teaming up to kind of muscle out Kian. Ultimately, you know, it's one of those things where the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And Zed, you know, Zed could have, a lot of, like, newer players will, um, will immediately try to go backdoor the other player. But in this case, Zed was like, hey, let's just have a gentleman's agreement. Let's take out the Octo Kid, and then we can go at each other from that, uh, from there. So... Yeah, you kind of saw that there. Both players snuffing Kian out. And Marsh is in the money, boys. Marsh uh, Marsh going to get at least one point here. Can't imagine he takes second, but you never know if people keep forgetting about him. So Marsh might try to shift over to the top, or the top over to Zed, because Zed doesn't have Desolator, so presumably these guys could get something done. 
Uh, so Zed versus Luke now, and Zed hanging into this game by a thread of life. You guys remember he was down to a smoking MCV and no base at one point, but he's back in it. You love to see it, you love to see it. Uh, the Big Betty doing work here. You gotta think this is Luke's game unless, unless Zed can pull out something crazy. But the problem right now is the map control from Luke. These Big Bettys are just going to be absolutely devastating. And Mirages really aren't the tank that you want to smother a Big Betty with. Grizzlies are better, a little bit stronger armor. Um, yeah, anyway, like I was saying, guys, in free-for-all, a lot of times these guys don't get good scouts. So Zed out with the spy satellite's nice, but oftentimes your dogs die right away, so it's difficult. Kian, I think he's playing politics, man. I think he wanted to stay on Luke's good time. Good side. Ooh, this oil. Look at that oil. These oils are going to be so juicy. These are the old oils, guys, in the free-for-all maps. Uh, try to speed up the action a little bit. So these old oils do catastrophic damage. Look how many tanks Luke sends in. Luke sends five rhinos to get the Big Betty. This is the juicer right now. This oil would take out his whole base. Uh, yeah, the storm is coming. And look at Marsh! Marsh pounding through. Another little bit of a gentleman's agreement. Marsh is like, hey, Luke, don't attack me. Look, I'm on your side. So Marsh, Marsh could be sneaking his way into a second place. He's gonna get the oil. Oh, he's gonna get the oil. Oh, he doesn't get it. The second wave's coming. Not gonna work, though. Um, yeah, Marsh, Marsh, if Marsh plays his cards right, Marsh could get into the, get into the second place, uh, here if Luke snuffs out, uh, if Luke snuffs out Zed. Uh, again, you do get points for all your different places, so you don't want to quit out. Yeah, I think the old oils might need a bigger buff. Yeah, you're right. Hey, this is the World Cup, though. If this takes five, six hours... No, I don't think this will take more than an hour. I think some games will go fast. It's If, if all four players make it to the two-minute mark, then things get a little weird. All right, so he's just got to hit this oil, and it's GG. Luke has so... Luke, oh my god, look! Oh, Luke just blundered like a thousand tanks. He doesn't even care. Luke, he's on Battle Lab Tech. He doesn't give a shit. And plus, he's got Marsh. He's got Marsh. Marsh is like the militia coming in. Yeah, Marsh picking on Zed. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. And it hats off to Marsh here because a lot of people would go at Luke because Luke was the one who, um, Luke was the one who 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 knocked Marsh out of the game, right? So a lot of players would go at, oh my god, Marsh's barracks just got hit by Harriers and went down to one tick of health, but it's still alive. But Marsh is smart, right? Marsh is playing the long game. He doesn't get caught up on grudges. He doesn't care about the battle. He cares about the war. Marsh wants to take second place here. And uh, and Luke might be inclined to let him do that. I think Luke might be more focused here on Zed. And for good reason. Obviously, Zed, Zed the bigger threat. There's no way for Marsh to beat Luke. Um, all right, so now the big Betty. Z Luke playing with his food a little bit here. Uh, yeah, just totally. Now Iron Curtain on Zed's doorstep. Neither of these players are going to quit out, because remember, your your place uh, your place matters. All right. Uh, oh, and the barracks finally goes down. Zed in the middle of all, in the middle of everything Zed's doing, Zed gets downfield and takes out Marsh's, uh, Marsh's barracks. Oh, Luke doesn't have the map scouted. <laughs> I'm like, Luke, what are you doing right now, dude? He's like, I'm like, Luke, you gotta try to end this. Luke's like, Luke's like, I can't see the map. <laughs> Luke's flying blind. Tanya. Oh, yeah, if your MCV gets destroyed on this map, you get a Tanya. Totally forget about that. Look at this. Look at Zed. Zed's going for revenge. So Zed's going to try to backdoor Marsh. If Zed could just stay alive, he could try to take out Marsh's base. It's going to come down to who has the last building here. Luke playing god mode a little bit here. Oh, and Luke. What a bully. Luke comes in. Uh, Luke comes in and takes out Marsh. And, it's, and guys, this is a game of politics here. This is a game of politics. All right, guys, point number two. Here's the brackets. So, well, brackets, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we got uh, we got Kian in blue in the top right. Again, Luke, again, bottom left. All the same spawn spots? No, Zed and Marsh switched. So again, guys, first place gets three, second place gets two, third place gets one, fourth place gets zero. We're running five games total. It's the Big Betty World Cup. Latov, get excited about it. Latov, drop an emoji for me. Drop an emoji for me. All right, so... 
the big thing is uh the big thing is um <laughs> why is navel here uh navel's on on this map yeah well anyway uh yeah so it's kind of annoying on a map that doesn't have water most time most of the time you turn off the navel yard and then you can't build the navel yard it's kind of annoying when you can because it, it changes the building order but anyway that a boy laptop's excited love to see it all right first big betty out already mystic marsh and marsh is gonna go right at luke oh he has to try to oh can he save the big betty though if he gives luke an elite rhino here it could be devastating now who gets in? Kian gets in and grabs it. Now where's Kian going? Remember, these guys are flying blind. They do not get good scouts in these games. Oh, and, and, go, and Kian's going right at Zed. Kian's going right at Zed. So Marsh is broken the top left, chilling, trying to stay alive. Kian has his sights set on Zed. Zed could be in trouble, but we saw him last game. Um, oh, and Zed. Will Zed be able to save his MCV? It's going to be so... Oh, with the Rhinos backing it. Allied's a really scary choice here. We are letting these guys choose their own factions. And um, Zed going allied scary. But Zed again saves his MCV. That's exactly what he did last point. Um, wow. it's hilarious. Okay. Uh, so a little engagement here. That Big Betty not getting too much done. Marsh, Marsh going right at Luke. And we talked about this, guys. The politics, right? So at the end of that last game, Z Luke got to decide who died first. And he, uh, he went at Marsh, so now he's got a target on his back. And, you know, it's one thing, oh, and Zed's MCV goes down. Kian gets the back door. Nice knockout for the Octo Kid. Uh, that's Luke's. Luke now with the Elite Rhino and the Big Betty coming at Marsh. This is going to be tough, guys. Playing allied here is so difficult. Um, these early Rhinos and the early Rhinos going Elite. So that's actually kind of an interesting balance that we, that's been added in, right? If you go at someone with the Big Betty early game, you're going to risk giving him an elite, and that could ultimately snuff you out very, very quickly. And that elite rhino leading the way for this big Betty, absolutely devastating. Marsh in trouble, looking for something to do. Not going to find an answer, though. Uh, Kian looking pretty tough here. Uh, Luke took some early hits, and Luke is struggling on his macro here. Kian looking pretty far ahead. Uh, Zed now with a bundle of GIs that are going to be a little bit annoying, depending on who he decides to go at. And Marsh just trying to stay alive, but not going to happen. And look at Luke. Luke and Marsh just on a grudge mission top left. Uh, that's hilarious. GI's coming from Zed. Going to pick on Marsh. Oh, oh, the Tanya. The Tanya. Zed gets the Tanya from losing his MCV. Oh, but but uh, Kian, smart play. Just backdoor. Zed takes out his building. So Marsh taking fourth. Zed taking third. And again, it comes down to Kian versus Luke. Two down. Two down. That's right, Rico. All right, so Luke, Luke quite a bit behind here. Uh, and it, it, again, guys, it's a little risky to grab a big Betty if you can't protect it. It's a little bit risky because you give up these early uh, these early elites, which is just, uh, I don't know, really unfortunate ultimately. Um, and just so swinging. Obviously, an elite early game makes all the difference. Oh, another big Betty. Oh, and Kian grabs that one too. Yeah, and uh, the Jedi is in trouble here, I think. He's trying to bring out fodder to help with these tanks. Oh, Oh, you know what? Zed's attack on Kian slowed him down a little bit. That Tanya took out a war factory. That was pretty nice. Now Kian... Oh, but Kian throws his elite in the pit and loses it. Um, but both these players, very nice unit control, getting in there and grabbing those big Bettys. Now the elite in the back door, but uh, big Betty going to go hunting on the top here. Is Luke going to do anything with this big Betty? What's the move here? I think he's going to try to go for a building or something. All right, now uh, Kian with another wave of tanks gets another elite. Does drive the elite into the t into the. Oh, and he saves the elite. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So if you get an elite in there and grab the crate, you can get it out before it dies. Okay, okay, and you gotta think this one's going for the Octo Kid. And after that fourth place finish in the first game, uh, this is a good way for Kian to make up the points here. Uh, yeah, Kian now uncontested. Luke, uh, yeah, Luke with nothing left here. And the Octo Kid rolls through. Yeah, playing allied here is just so tough. Uh, these early rhinos are, are just absolutely devastating. Oh my god, the Tanya from Luke. <laughs> yeah, the MCV giving a Tanya is a great move. That was Minka's idea. We, that I think that should be in the regular game. The regular MCV should give Tanyas. I think everyone can agree on that. Luke pumping drones here. Um, yeah. Luke did get Luke did somehow get the big Betty downfield. Doesn't matter though. Luke's gonna lose his war factory. Luke now down to a barracks. Does have a big Betty. 
the big problem though is once you lose your war factory, you can no longer get the big Betty. Um, oh, he's using drones to get it. That's actually pretty heads up. It's difficult to get a drone in there and grab the crate. You have to run like in a perfectly straight line. All right, so that barracks is Luke's last production. Oh my God, the Tesla troopers trying to counter the big Betty. <laughs> so Kian takes that one home. All right, here we go, here we go. Point number three, you guys doing it on YouTube? You guys are living the life. You guys are living the life. You guys are living the life. You guys got to miss that. We just had to update the map, quit a game, update the map. Took a half hour. Everyone on Twitch left me. I'm by myself now. I'm just kidding. There's still 40 of you guys. You guys on YouTube, though, we cut it all out. If you're on Twitch, you do want to catch the highlights. I definitely recommend going over to YouTube. If you are on YouTube catching the games, like, comment, and subscribe. It's free for you. It helps me immensely. Try to get the content in front of more people. Dropping a GG in the comments. Tells the algorithm that you're liking the content. It puts it in front of more people. Step by step, we slowly get RA to the moon. That's what it's all about. So, point number three here, point number three, Luke in the lead, Marsh struggling to kind of try to get some points going here. Uh, that last game, Luke coming right for him. And it's a little bit tricky. The Vendetta business is definitely tricky here. So we are gonna see Zed try to build up into that second zone. Switch to that second zone, but yeah, it's not, he's gonna get, yeah, so Zed with the aggressive build, but Kian with that first big Betty, the first big Betty so decisive here, but we have seen that swing as well, you have to protect your big Betty, now if that big Betty goes down, your opponent gets a, gets a, uh, an elite, things can swing very, very quickly, Marsh and Luke squared off again, these guys are the ones with the blood feud right now, uh, Marsh does get in and grabs that big Betty, and the big Betty can't sit on top of the hill, if you sit on top of the hill, um, it will start taking damage, uh, so, Kian coming in, snuffing out the Algerian, Algerian warrior here in the bottom right. And Marsh raining down on Luke. Marsh raining down on Luke. Oh, the MCV's looking juicy. Remember, guys, he probably doesn't have the map scouted right now. But Marsh has plenty of tanks to support right now. Luke way behind. <laughs> and Kian taking out Zed. Zed down to a barracks. Zed now down to nothing. All right, so it devolves into Mystic Marsh versus the Octo Kid. Looking like this one's going to be a fast point. Marsh going hunting downfield now. He's got the big Betty out. He's going for the MCV. Kian going to lose his MCV on the backside, but Kian has a scary force on the left side. Uh, what's Kian do here? Is Kian or Marsh just going to wait for his production? Kian has a lot of rhinos, though. Marsh has a lot of rhinos. Marsh should have enough to hold this position. He's now up in MCV, so all he has to do is hold. He pulls the Big Betty back to a defensive position. Needs to protect that Big Betty. Tanya coming! Tanya coming! Kian has a, Kian has his Tanya in the back right. Kian has his Tanya in the back right. Oh! Marsh blunders! Marsh throws all of his tanks into the trap. Oh, no! The, he throws all of his tanks into the trap. Loses his tanks, now trying to bring out the drones, but the Big Betty's raining down. Kian has a has a Tanya AFK top right, and what a swing. Uh, there was a screenshot there where I would have sworn uh, that Marsh was just way ahead, but that Big Betty timer as well, you can't sit on the Big Betty, so Marsh was forced to get aggressive there. Um, this map's really, really tricky, guys. The middle of this map, these cliffs and stuff are very, very difficult to deal with the pathing. And, uh, and obviously the trap is an odd mechanic. But yeah, if you go in there, you're going to lose everything that goes in. So Kian takes first, Marsh taking second, Luke taking third. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Point number, point number four. Point number four here. Uh, six, six, three, three. There may be a slight discrepancy. It's possible Luke has five and Zed has four. Uh, we're going to have to have someone go back and watch the replay. There's 40 people in the Twitch chat. I have a feeling one of them is going to rise to the occasion and go watch the replay. It's really difficult for me to watch replays, um, but I think if I keep passively, aggressively trying to ask for help, I think someone will come to my aid. Okay, so, uh, yeah, point number four, we'll see here. There's been some interesting strategies here. We haven't seen a lot of repetitive Big Betty. Generally, when we, when we play this after a stream, we play a one-off, everyone just gets weird, tries to have fun. So to play five games in a row, seriously, it's plain to kind of see how the metas develop. Um, all right, Asan. Dr. Asan comes in and saves it for us. So Luke did die first. Okay, so Luke did die first in that first one, so the scoreboard's off by one point. Not a big not a big deal, though. Thank you very much, Asan. Okay, so Big Betty now for Kian, that first Big Betty. You gotta protect the Big Betty, though. You need to protect the Big Betty. Marsh taking early pressure again. Marsh just a target on his back all day here. People been going at him. Now the Big Betty coming in. Oh, Oh, so the Big Betty just times out that time. Again, guys, the Big Betty only has a, a very quick timer on it. So Zed trying to use Flak Tracks to get the Big Betty. Um, that's not going to work. Flak Tracks are going to be, I don't think they're going to be strong enough. 
And now Luke Z with a big Betty. He's going at Marsh. Everyone wants a piece of Mystic Marsh. But oh, Kian gets backdoored. Kian gets backdoored. Zed backdoors Kian. Zed backdoors Kian. Now Kian out in MCV. Marsh gets a breath of life here. But now Luke might be setting his sights on him. Looks like that big Betty. Again, guys, it's possible to hide in these corners. Oftentimes the player won't have the map scouted. It looks like Luke is figuring it out, though. Obviously, he knows someone's down here. He doesn't know what he's going into, though. But Luke with a scary amount of rhinos now. Marsh on 4K. I'm not sure if Marsh is producing yeah marsh is bringing out drones now marsh is kind of trying to stay alive here hoping someone also takes some pressure uh, off him here uh like i said guys it's not about taking first just about trying to get in get in the points uh get in those top three you don't want to be the first one out drones out for marsh trying to stop the bleeding but luke is a force and luke has his sights set on marsh trying to build across that bottom left Zed and Kian going at each other. Zed way out tanking on the top side. Zed going to get the knockout on the Octo Kid. And uh, yeah, Kian going to pay the price for that early pressure that he put on Marsh. Uh, it's it's kind of a ring around the rosy around here. You know, you get uh, someone back, comes on the backside. Oh, and Luke. Luke blunders so many tanks. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Java, thank you for confirming that. Appreciate it. Uh, Luke. Uh... Luke. Oh my god. Okay. Zed rolling through. Okay, a couple interesting things here to note. Luke just blundered a billion tanks and now could lose the game. But now he has a ba big Betty on the backside. Marsh is going to go down, but leaves a power plant. These guys playing politics, right? They're, these players who are way ahead are going to play God mode to see who stays in the game, who's going to be the last man standing and get those points, uh, which is kind of a funny thing I didn't really consider much. Big Betty's still doing work on the backside, but Zed doesn't care. Zed's base is pretty stretched out. That Big Betty will time out eventually. And in the meantime, Zed doing work on the backside. But Luke now with a lot of fodder in the group, it's going to come down to tank control. Zed needs to be a little bit careful here. This is a blunderable position for him. Zed now out in MCV, but on three War Factories and 14k. Plenty of money here, but the blunders can happen, especially on this map. Oh, but Zed has a sneaky elite Rhino bottom side. Gonna go right for the MCV. Zed now diving on the MCV. Luke up in MCV. If Luke can hold this MCV, he can try to keep himself in this game. Luke needs to scrape himself back together here. He's up in MCV, but he is down on tanks. And oh my god, Zed got three Tanyas. <laughs> Zed got three Tanyas. <laughs> they didn't do anything, but yeah, when the MCV is destroyed, instead of engineers, they'll randomly pop out uh, Tanya's, which is uh, a fun little Easter egg for the players. The Tesla Troopers doing work now. Luke just trying to hold the line. Luke on 12k. Luke on 12k. Oh my god, Zed is blundering so hard right now. I mean... It's hard to say. Luke is such a good player, and Luke did so many good things there that it's hard to really call it a blunder uh, because Luke made that very, very difficult. Um, I mean, Zed made some mistakes for sure, but they weren't any obvious ones. Ultimately, the Jedi is just playing incredible blitz right now. Uh, the Tesla Troopers doing work. <laughs> and Luke goes offensive. Instead of pulling back to defend here, Luke is going to accept a base trade. Um... And Luke doesn't even need... Luke is defending on the backside here. Luke now going... And that's Zed's last production. That's Zed's last production. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Let's take a look at the predictions here on the last point of the tournament. Uh, we got Luke 65% the favorite. Mars 25%. No one voted on Kian? No one voted on the Octo Kid? That's hilarious. You guys don't believe in the Octo Kid. So Luke has eight, Zed and Kian tied at six, Marsh has four, three for first place, two for second. It's a complicated equation. This is the last point. Could come down to a tiebreaker, hard to say. All these guys want it. Marsh is kind of like the bomb in Mario Kart right now. He can't really technically take first, but he can mess with people and choose who to get vengeance on. Like I said, guys, it's a game of politics. We've seen that all day today. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, sometimes the fun ideas that I have, I drink a couple beers, I cook up an idea, I DM a bunch of people, make a commitment, and then we do it, and I'm like, damn, that idea was a lot better when I was drinking beer. But, um, you know, that's usually the case with, like, remember Yuri Party? Not my best idea ever, but it was fun, it was fun. This one, though, the players definitely get a little bit frustrated, this is a very difficult one. Free-for-alls are always frustrating, especially in a competitive environment like this. Kian gets that first big Betty again. I think he's had the first big Bettys all day long. And Marsh goes right at Luke. <laughs> Marsh goes... Marsh. Marsh. I didn't even notice that. I was doing my pregame rant. Marsh opens five barracks, sells the MCV, no oils, and now is just harassing Luke. Uh, heavy lies the head that wears the crown, going right at the king, going right at Luke, making him work for it in this last point. It cracks me up. Is it frustrating? Yes. Is it stupid? Yes. 
Um, I, I gotta say I'm laughing a little bit though. And Kian going to work here. Uh, Zed in trouble. The Octo Kid should be able to cinch out a first place finish here. Will it be enough? It's gonna depend how the dice lie with the other player finishes. <laughs> Luke's gonna be so pissed. Marsh has to sell off his whole base right now. Oh my god. Tanya's. Look at the Tanya's. Oh, the Tanya's. <laughs> the Tanya's take the oil, blow themselves up. Zed down to his last barracks. Luke is still technically in this game, but Marsh just a thorn in his side. Um, and now Luke. And Luke's going to be so pissed. Luke's going to be so pissed. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. I mean, hilarious for us. Um, it, it, it's a little bit mean. It's a little bit mean to put players in positions like this. Because really, free-for-all, no one really wins. Like, someone technically wins, but ultimately, I think all the players kind of leave with a, a sour feeling in their stomach. Um, <laughs> the MCV goes down. And the Octo Kid. So the Octo Kid taking third. Oh, it's going to be a tie. We're going to have to go to a tiebreaker. We're going to have to go to a tiebreaker. Oh, Marsh has his pillbox left. Oh, Marsh. Oh, it's not going to be a tie. Oh, Marsh has to save the pillbox. If Marsh loses the pillbox, the Tanya's coming. The Tanya. Oh, the Tanya goes down. This pillbox is everything. It means whether or not Luke's going to take second or third place. He holds the Tanya. Oh, my God. He holds, or sorry, he holds the pillbox against the Tanya. The pillbox is still alive. Marsh holding out on the top side. Kian's going to take Luke out, and I think that's going to give Kian the win. Wait, will, is it, will it still be a tie? So Luke gets one. Oh, it still is a tie. It's still a tie, even with that. Even with that, it's still a tie. Damn, I thought that Marsh, I thought Mystic Marsh was going to tip the tides for us. Oh my god. All right, guys. It's not just another round of the Blitz World Series. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's the championship! The Big Betty World Cup championship! Are you guys freaking out? I'm freaking out. It's the tiebreaker, it's the tiebreaker, it's the tiebreaker. These guys knotted up 9-9 nine, nine right now. Marsh and Zed both putting on a good show for us, but it all boiling down to uh, Luke Z, the Jedi in green out of the US of A, bottom right facing off against Kian, the Octo Kid in blue out of Russia, top left. Luke Z going to make that stretch towards the center. It, I mean, it very well could come down to the first Big Betty. It very easily could come down to the first Big Betty. Okay, that, oh, that Big Betty, he's got to smother it quick. He has to smother it so quick. It's just going to come down to the first Big Betty. The tiebreaker, the tiebreaker. It's devastating. He has to smother the Big Betty. If he loses the War Factory, he'll be out. He sells the War Factory. And the Octo Kid, the first Big Betty all day long. And uh, he gets it again here in the championship. Going to be enough to cinch it out. You're thinking, Ivor, this is nonsense. I agree. Uh, but that's why it's called the Big Betty World Cup and not uh, not the 1v1 World Cup, which is more serious and is going to be starting right after this. Don't worry. Regular game's coming up. I know this isn't quite scratching the itch for some of you. Um, it was different, though. It was different. Uh, some, there's, there's two different kinds of ideas in the world. There's good ideas and there's fun ideas. The fun ideas in this case tend to oftentimes be frustrating and annoying, but tis life, tis life. The Octo Kid taking it home. The Octo Kid taking it home. Kian, ladies and gentlemen, our champion. Do, 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 do. The kids are coming for you.